time. And that is also why we are opening the new academic year 2017-2018 because the Lord has been good to us. Dear people of God and members of the queer fraternity, I bring you greetings from Uganda. I represent Uganda on the University Council. And I bring you a very special greeting from the chairman of the Uganda Episcopal Conference, <coughs> whom I met on Tuesday on my journey coming this way in Guru. And I brief him on my journey here. So on behalf of the Uganda Episcopal Conference and on behalf of the people of Uganda and on his own behalf, he sends you greetings and best wishes for this new academic year. Also from my diocese of Arua, I bring you greetings from the clergy, the religious, and lay faithful. And I also bring you greetings from the refugees from South Sudan who are now in my diocese. And on Monday, the 28th, I was with them in one of the settlements to open a nursery school that the diocese, with the help of friends from the United States of America, built for the refugee children. So I told them, I'm on my way to Nairobi for the convocation of the academic year of our university. So they send you greetings. For those who might be wondering where Arua is, we are in the north west of Uganda. North of us is the Republic of South Sudan. West of us is the Democratic Republic of Congo. And I speak of refugees because we are the immediate um, neighbors. So we have well over one million. So I, I invite you to pray for this over 1 million refugees in my diocese. And I've created a vicariate for them. So it is like another diocese within my diocese. So we shall pray for them as well. I'm happy to be here with you. Queer has been my, my place of study Barely three years after my priestly ordination, my bishop sent me here to study. And where I was very young, at that time it was called CHIA, Catholic Higher Institute of Eastern Africa. And the change to where happened when I was here. So I can say I was one of the samples interviewed by the Council of Higher Education for the registration of chair to become a university. At that time, we were very few, hardly 100. But it was a vibrant community, very vibrant community. And I'm glad where has continued to grow up to today as we celebrate the opening of the academy year is a sign that where is going on. It is now a big institution of which we are proud and we pray that it continues to grow and serve us well. The theme I chose for this celebration is faith in action. Faith in action. It's a theme that we hear quite often, but to put it into practice is the challenge. To put faith into action is what Christianity has been struggling with. And it is taken from James 
the letter of St. James, chapter 2, uh, from verse 14 to verse 26. That's where you will read about what St. James says about faith in action. St. James says, Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Chapter 2, verse 18. So, St. James challenges our faith, that faith, which is a gift of God to us, as also to be put into action. Faith should inspire us into good actions. We all have our experience of what faith has moved us to do. I want to appreciate very much the two sisters who came and sang so nicely to us. I'm sure they were moved by faith to sing so well. Sister Martha and Sister Felicita. Thank you. When you were singing, I could see that it was from faith that you used your voice so well. That would be a way to inspire other people's faith to action. So each one of us has got his or her own experience of what faith has helped him or her to do. I'm sure all of you, faith led you to do some good actions. I have my own experience of what faith has moved me to do. And this experience I want to share with you happened when I was here at Chaya or Quaya in those days. I went to the city of Nairobi in those days. Going to the city was not easy. You either went to go by bus or by Matatu. So as I finished, Doing what I wanted to do, I was now at the bus stage, waiting for transfer to come back to the gutter. And there were many people. It was rush hour, something like 5 p.m. Everybody was anxious to come home. So as we were waiting, <coughs> A lady came driving a nice saloon car and was trying to pick a friend of hers. And then the Matato also came trying to pick people from the bus station. But this Matato driver was so careless that he knocked the car of this lady. And as soon as that happened, this Matata driver was trying to escape and we were all shouting to the lady. Luckily she was not so hard, but the car was damaged. We were shouting to her, take the number of that car, take the number. And she quickly took the pen and wrote down the vehicle number of the Matatu. She was a lady well prepared, even at the pen and paper. And then she came out of her car. The Matata man escaped. She asked, now, I need to put down some names of witnesses. And at that moment, everybody was looking away. I said, but we saw this happen. Can nobody accept? And for me also, Coming from Uganda, I had my own trouble. <laughs> I was telling myself that you are Uganda, don't have that you do this. But something was pushing me. That but you witnesses, you could also be a, a, a witness to this accident. So when I saw nobody volunteering, I volunteered myself. But still I told her that I'm from Uganda. Hoping that she will say, ah, I want somebody to come <laughs> But she said, this is very good. I will take your name and contact, phone contact. 
So she took my name and phone contact. And she told me she's a medical doctor and she will call me if this case will come up in court. So from that moment, I was wondering how I'm going to appear in Kenya court. So I came back here, I had my own challenge. And one day, the phone came. There was only one line in Kwea at that time. I was called, you have a phone call? I went and the lady said, are you Father Sabino Doki? I said, yes. She said, I'm the lady who was eh, knocked and you accepted to be the witness of that accident. So I, now I was thinking, uh, she's going to tell me when the court is. She said, I have called you to thank you for accepting to be a witness. The Matatu man was found and he paid all the cost of the accident. So there is no more case. I'm only calling to thank you. You can imagine my joy at that moment. <laughs> I was very happy because what I was fearing did not come. But my faith was challenged. It was challenged. Like any other person, our faith is always challenged. There is that voice always telling us to do something good. But there is also that fear holding us behind. So to put faith into action, eh, we have to be brave. The whole world will be transformed if every Christian, every believer, would put faith into action. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is often speaking to us about marginalized people, those in the peripheries. Our faith calls us to action to help even such people. The Catholic Church in its social teaching is asking us to do good for the transformation of our society. Our faith should challenge us to do that. So faith, which is a gift of God for our salvation, should be put into action, should help us to do good work. Last year, we ended the year of mercy, which emphasized on the works of mercy. Our faith should help us to continue doing works of mercy. The readings of today also help us to do works of mercy, to do works of love. St. Paul, in his first letter to the Thessalonians, invites his audience, his listeners, to put action in their faith. He prayed for them that they should increase and abound in love for one another and for all to increase and abound in love is to put faith into action. Here in the Catholic University, as our motto says, we are consecrated to the truth. As a people consecrated to the truth, love should increase and abound in us. And this will help us to put our faith into action. Pope John Paul II, who is now St. John Paul II, once was saying, our society is growing so much in various fields. People have gone even to the moon 
That's love among humanity is not growing. And that is where we believers, our faith should be put to action. So we can do more works of love. In the gospel read to us today, according to St. Matthew, Jesus invites his followers to be awake. Someone awake can never be idle. Someone who is awake is active. There is also the saying that an idle mind is the workshop of the, the devil. Idleness gives opportunity to the devil to take control of your work, of your life. So putting faith into action helps us to keep doing the work of God. So the devil will have no opportunity. Every day, let us look at what Jesus is doing, is telling us to do, to be awake and active in our lives as Christians. That would mean putting our faith into action. Here in the Catholic University, I know how hard you are all working. Everybody is busy. But yesterday when I arrived, there were meetings going on, classes going on, everybody was busy. And that is good. The students have to work hard if they are to pass exams. They are also, at the same time, to work hard to remain in contact with God and with one another. The professors, lecturers are all busy to impart knowledge. The administrators and support staff are all working hard to see that the Catholic University moves forward. All this we have to do with love. Love for God and love for our neighbors. Our work without love will be empty, will not benefit, will not benefit us and others. So the challenge we have as believers is that of putting our faith into action. If everyone would always have examination of conscience, what have I done today that has put my faith into action? That would be really something good. You will appreciate what you have done and you will look for more opportunity to put your faith into action. I would like to conclude by reaffirming that being a member of the Catholic University, whether a student, a professor, a lecturer, an administrator, a support staff, a parent, a council member, a neighbor, a friend of the university, all this should have a bearing of faith in us. It should help us to serve our communities with love. Being a member of the Catholic University teaches one to put faith into action. So when you complete your studies or you leave this place, go to do good. The Lord be with you.